the early 1980s, during the period of the Marcos dictatorship in the Philippines, I worked as community organizer of coconut tenant farmers in the province of Quezon. Wrongly suspected as collaborating with the communist New People's Army guerrillas, two women fellow organizers and I were surrounded by five heavily armed military men and were brought to Camp Guillermo Nacar for interrogation. Luckily, we were released three hours after detention. But one of our farmer members met a different fate. He was salvaged, murdered a few weeks later. During the dictatorship, 3,257 people were killed extrajudicially by the military. 35,000 were individually tortured and 70,000 were jailed. Similar to the situation in the 1960s to 80s in many developing countries in Latin America, Africa, and Asia that were under dictatorships, fascism enveloped Italy in the 1920s. The Feast of Christ the King was instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925 to respond to this situation and the increasing secularism. The Pope underlined the importance for duly elected political leaders to take into account the common good and their subject's human dignity. Today, we are witnessing again the revival of populist rhetoric, fascism, and the undermining of democracies. Then and now, these regimes relied on propaganda, indoctrination, and what we call today fake news or alternative facts. The celebration of the Feast of Christ the King is an important reminder for us Christians, political leaders, and citizens alike of what constitutes God's reign and true Christian leadership. The first reading for the Feast was taken from the book of Daniel. Daniel himself was a government official, and the book was written roughly in 6th century BCE. Daniel had a vision of the downfall of four beasts, representing empires that ruled Israel through force and intimidation. Our reading, Daniel 7, 13 to 14, speaks of the Son of Man, whose rule is the only one that will last forever. The book of Revelation, from where the second reading was taken, likewise speaks of a vision of a beast, which majority of scholars agree refers to the Roman Empire. Revelation 16, 13, likens Roman instruments of propaganda and indoctrination to frogs that capture their prey with their tongues. Jesus, referred to as rulers of the kings of the earth in Revelation, is the antithesis of these political powers. In the Gospel, we read him proclaiming, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. In contrast, Pilate, the Roman governor interrogating him, was not interested in the truth at all, but only in winning favor in the eyes of the local citizens. Jesus clarified to Pilate that his kingdom does not belong in this world. The reign of God for Jesus is not the restoration of the kingdom of David, which many Jews were hoping for. While not directly political nor military, this notion of God's reign has strong political implications. In Jesus' inclusive table fellowship, his rejection of rituals and beliefs that unnecessarily burden the poor, and his destabilizing parables that bring down the mighty and honorable from their thrones, all of these give us a glimpse of what the reign of God is like. This vision posed a big threat to the guardians of the Jewish tradition as well as the Roman authorities. Neither a slave to public opinion nor called by public authorities, Jesus had the courage to speak the truth about God's reign and was willing to suffer for the truth that needs to be spoken. In the Gospels, Jesus often refers to himself as the Son of Man. Paradoxically, his authority will be established on the foundations of the crucifixion, something that is radically opposite to other ways of establishing dominion. The face of Christ the King reminds us Christians 
that Christ must reign in our societies and in our hearts and minds? Do we foster God's reign when we buy populist rhetoric of us versus them? Nationals versus immigrants, upright citizens versus drug addicts and peddlers. Does God reign in a society that promotes or tolerates forced separation of families, fake news or alternative facts, misogynist remarks, chilling of critics, and extrajudicial killings? The crucifixion of Jesus and the death of many other martyrs for faith and justice shows that the promotion of God's reign is not easy and that this entails sacrifice. The powers that be will not readily give up their dominion. But our faith provides us with the basis of hope that in the end, it is God's reign that will last forever. With this, I wish you all a liberating feast of Christ's reign.